Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you how to use an inverse trig function to find an angle. Okay, um, and in order to use an inverse trig function, you need to know what the functions are. Okay, so probably the thing that everyone should memorize if you're going to learn a little bit of trigonometry is this word called SOHCAHTOA. It's not really a word, but it's a, what they call a mnemonic, a mnemonic device to help you understand or to remember the relationships that exist in the three trig functions that we're going to be studying. And the three trig functions are sine, which we sometimes leave the E off, cosine, again we sometimes leave the E off, and a tangent. Okay? And it's sine, cosine, and tangent. Now, uh, how do you write an inverse trig function? An inverse trig function basically looks, looks like this. You would put like sine to the negative one, or cosine to the negative one, or tangent to the negative one. And you, you need to use the inverse uh, trig functions in order to find angles. Now to use the regular trig functions, you can find the sides of a triangle like 5, 2.5, and then whatever that might be using trig. But to find the angles inside, you want to use the inverse trig functions. Okay, so that's the first thing to try to remember. Now let's take a look at this particular problem. Let's just assume, for example, that this might be a ladder. And let's say it's a 5-foot ladder, and uh, we want to put it like 2.5 feet away from the wall okay, that we're leaning it up against. But the question is, what should this angle be? You know, how far should we tilt it in order for it to, you know, not fall? This is kind of like one of those optimum angles so that it stays pretty steady. Now, how would I go about studying this? Well, let's start with using a trig function. Now, a trig function would say, what do I know from this problem? I know I have a five-foot ladder, and I know that I am 2.5 feet away from the wall. And here's my angle that I'm trying to find. Well, Sokotoa tells me which one of the trig functions to use. The sine, the capital S sine, would be found by saying the opposite from the angle over the hypotenuse of the triangle that's formed. Now, if we go over here and look at that, sine over hypotenuse, we don't have the information here. So we have two unknowns, okay? So we don't want to use that. Tangent, we have, would have the opposite over the adjacent. And again, we don't, we don't have the opposite, but we do have the adjacent. Now, the only one that actually works is the cosine, which is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. Now, let's look over here. We have the adjacent side, 2.5, over the hypotenuse, which is 5. Okay, so let's actually use cosine, and we'll just say cosine, and that's how you abbreviate cosine. And we're going to call this angle, I don't know, theta is a common uh, name of uh, an, unknown, uh, an unknown angle. Okay, so we'll say cosine of theta will be equal to the opposite, or excuse me, the adjacent over the hypotenuse, okay, that's adjacent over the hypotenuse, just abbreviate. In this case, the adjacent's 2.5, the hypotenuse is 5. Now, what is that equal to? I get cosine of theta is equal to, and we know that 2.5 divided by 5 is 0.5, or just half. Right Now, we'd be able to get the angle if we knew how to work backwards, right? And this is where the inverse trig function comes in. So in my step three, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by the inverse cosine. Now, let me show you why. So here I have inverse cosine times cosine theta. And then this side, remember what, what you do to one side, you do to the other. That's just regular algebra. I'm going to say inverse cosine of 0.5. Now, 
remember what inverse means. When you multiply something like cosine times the inverse cosine, it's like saying um, one time, or excuse me, uh, two times one half, right? It's like putting this over one. So basically that divided by half, for example, two div uh, divided by, excuse me, two times one half, this is like multiplying an inverse, right? Always turns out to be one. It doesn't really make any difference what it would be. Three over three is one, right? Same thing with cosine and inverse cosine. When you multiply these two, they cancel out to be equal to one. And you're just left with the angle that you're looking for. And what you do is you go to the... Um, go to your uh, calculator and put in inverse cosine of 0.5. Now let me show you how to do that. So here's my calculator. You can actually do it online as well. There's a lot of very good calculators online. Let me just clear that. Now inverse cosine, you hit the second function and you'll see right down there, see where it says cosine negative one? So that activates that and you can see in your screen probably not so well, inverse cosine, and then 0.5. And what'll happen is you get the angle and you can see that it's 60. So the angle theta will equal 60 degrees. If this is a right triangle, which we know it is, if this is 90, that's 60, that needs to be 30. And you've just now found all the angles in that right triangle. Okay, I hope that was helpful for you.